Brought to you by Eco Alkaline's environmentally responsible batteries, cat5.tv slash eco. Get a free trial of Netflix at cat5.tv slash Netflix. We'd love to have you check it out. And uh, we're going to show you a device tonight that's actually going to allow you to watch Netflix on your TV. With Whoa. The world's smallest computer. Let's get to it and at it. Want to take a look? I'd like to take a look. Can you imagine a computer that fits in this here box? That there box? This here box. <laughs> Is a full, let's see the specs here. This is a dual core processor computer with a gig of RAM, eight gigabytes of built in memory. It's a quad core OpenGL ES 2.0 AMD Z430 GPU. For those of you in the know, you're like, whoa, that's big for something so small. It's got, and it supports up to 32 gigabytes of memory. You stick whoa. a micro SD card in there. They've got you covered. It's got built-in BGN Wi-Fi. This particular model, this is the MK8023S, which you can read all about by going to the website cat5.tv slash mini PC. Get over to that to find out. This particular model also has Bluetooth. Whoa. So we're going to look at uh, what that means to us in a little bit. It supports Macromedia Flash or Adobe Flash, I should say. Uh, that's, you're old, that's eh? Me back. You're, yeah, you're that's old. Me. What I mean, <laughs> Macromedia. Flash. Wow, that's a couple uh, years back. I want to I take this out of the box and show you why this is so cool. Don't go to the site just yet because then you'll know. Okay. i got to show you. You ready? It costs $8 million. Okay, though. world's smallest PC, folks. People were saying, is it, you know, what, what is it? What is it? Here it is. This is the Rico Magic MK802 3S. That is pretty cool. Let's get this out of the box. Unboxing music, please. Ding, 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 ding. That there didn't sound like unboxing music. <laughs> I'm not going to go there, but. <clears throat> this is it. That's it. It's a little bit bigger than the size of a flash drive, a USB it flash is. drive. It kind of looks like a USB flash drive, smaller than a bold. Smaller than a bowl. There you go. I want to tell you what's so cool about this. You, you take a look and tell me what you, th what you see. Okay. It looks like it's got a USB. You, know, you plug yeah. it into something, right? We plug it into something. But plug it into something. But Here's the thing. what? A picture of USB flash drive where you plug it into USB. Okay, we have right? USB port. Now, this one, instead of USB on the end, it has a plug for HDMI. HDMI? So we're plugging this directly into your HDTV. And it becomes a computer connected into your, your television set. Just like that. Okay. As I mentioned, this is a multi-core computer. It's running out of the box. It's running Android 4.1. So we know that it's, uh, it's a good you know, operating system from Android. There it is. Let's, let's actually take a look. I, I have pre-shot some video just because I wanted to actually be able to hold this in our hands and show it to you. And, and Eric and I are going to go through the video with we'd you. We'd do it live, but we'd have to take the cameras offline. Yeah, we'd have to let it around, <laughs> and there you go. So let's take a quick look at this. This is uh, the Ricomagic Mini PC, cat5.tv slash mini PC. Now, for basic setup, now that's a close-up of what it looks like. So you can see the HDMI port on the left there. And uh, around the other side... We've got a power input, which is USB. We've got a USB port to be able to connect peripherals to it. You can see just how absolutely small it is. Just look at that. So you put this in behind the TV, and you're, you're not even going to know it's there. Your kids will know it's there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to actually plug this into an HDTV here. And you'll see, okay, now I'm actually having trouble getting it in. And they've thought of this because some televisions are not going to allow you to plug in something that's got such a wide kind of chassis to it. So they've provided you with a short little extension cord that will just simply allow you to plug that in directly to the back of your TV. So straight into HDMI. Now we need to power it. So we're going to do that through USB. So I'm plugging a USB cord in here to the power port. And then you can actually plug the other end into the service port on the television to be able to provide power to that device. Now let's fire it up for the first time. There we go. 
Out of the box, it's preset for 720p and actually supports up to 1080p at 60 frames a second, and that's uh, that's our first screen. So, how cool is that? That is very cool. Easy, easy, a easy setup. Couple of folks setup. in the chat room even said that's very cool. You see how quick and easy that was to set up? Yeah. Like just like that, just breezy, breezy, breezy. Uh, so I actually wanted to take it kind of to the next level. You, you need to have a look at this. I mean, that's unbelievably cool. This is what's interesting, I think, about this time that we're living in, is that things are computers at one point got bigger and bigger and faster Didn't and faster. Didn't we have a whole room full of computers just to, just to do, do that. fairly simple calculations? Yeah. So now things are getting so incredibly small, and and it's a good thing. It's, it's really changing the way that we look at computing and how we do computing. You think about, you know, do you need to go out and buy a new TV to be able to have Internet on your TV? Well, no. So that's your mini SD card. Yeah, you've got a micro couple of SD. mini USB. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you do have just one USB connector. The other USB is for power, and then one to connect it to do okay. firmware updates. One's and for DC, like that. right? Yeah. So now I'm just fixing my my shot here so it doesn't loop. Uh, this device, believe it or not, okay, we're going to look a little bit closer at it, but is only around sixty to seventy dollars. Wow. And it's a full computer. It's it's cheap. It gets the job done. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the specs. It does 1080p HD video, as I was saying. It will support HD on YouTube if you want to watch your Netflix videos, things like that. Because it's powered by Android 4.1, you can get into the Google Play Store, download as many apps as you want. Anything that you can do on your tablet is now available. I was going to say, so all the stuff I have TV. on my tablet, I can. It's up on the big screen TV. Very cool. To take it one step further, you get your tablet or your smartphone that's Android based, you install the free app. And now that device becomes the remote control for your television, for the Ricoh Magic device. Oh, it actually okay. becomes an on. So you can see the remote on the screen, and you can actually control it like that. On your tablet, you can you can you know it's a big button kind of thing. Okay, so I can. I've got an Android tablet. Mm -hmm. I can take that. You can actually make it the controller for Very that. Very cool. So what's up on the screen? You can push play. On your tablet, and okay. it will play up So there. if I don't have that, how am I controlling this? That's the thing. We've got a couple of different options. First of all, the, the Ricoh Magic Air Mouse. So this I can actually hold in the air, and I can control just by pointing at things on the screen, very much like a Wiimote, if you will. Um, it's just a simple remote and should do the job well. Now, unfortunately, the particular device that we received as a review unit is non-functional. Oh, but I have. But seen it looks videos. good. It looks good, uh, and I have seen videos of this working, and it's a it's a rather impressive device, uh, and that's available off of their website as well. So next up, of course, th now you it's USB. You can plug in a mouse. Uh, we're going to see that I actually ended up using a um, just a, a Logitech wireless mouse, okay. and just plugged in the receiver to the USB on the Rico Magic device, and then I was able to use my wireless mouse kind of idea. But then, we know, what do we know about the device already? It's got Bluetooth! Right. Aha! So that means we can use headsets, wireless devices, things like that, and wireless micro keyboards. Imagine well, that, a full QWERTY keyboard as your remote control. So I can be sitting in my lazy boy or lazy you butt. You would be. My lazy butt chair. And mm -hmm. Something like this. This is just a re uh, mini keyboard, not mm -hmm. directly uh, associated with Rico Magic at all. But they do have similar devices available on their website as well that wow. you can purchase. Um, but this is a fan fantastic way to control it. Yeah. Now you can get a full size keyboard, of course, but most of you are going to want to use this for multimedia predominantly. I mean, that's what you're going to be using it for because it's on your big screen TV. But this allows you to actually use it for internet and surf around, actually type some stuff and do emails and things like that on a full QWERTY keyboard. Plus, it's got the mouse trackpad as well with left and right click and all that kind of stuff. So there are many, many different ways that you can control the thing because it's limitless. It's USB. It's Bluetooth. Impressed. So, But then we run into the fact that it only has one USB port. Right. Well, that's not a problem. Right? USB hub, perhaps? No. Right, but we're going to look at that and, and think, okay, well, what's going to happen if we plug in a hub? We're going to plug in a device and another device, and we're pulling all the power off of the service jack on the back of our TV. Right. We've got maybe a couple of amps if we're lucky. And this device, I'll just tell you, it's not in the manual, but uh, it is a two-amp device. So you need to have a dedicated two-amp 
power going to that. So if it's the only device and you're not plugging in peripherals, then that's probably okay to plug it into the back of your TV or into a computer's USB port. But what happens if we want to plug in devices to that is it's going to be drawing more ampage. Okay. If we plug in a webcam to it, it's going to be drawing more power. If we plug in a mouse, it's going to be drawing more power. So that is where the newer technology 7-port USB 2.0 hub comes in. Whoa. What is cool about this is, um, we're going to take a close look, uh, not only is it a USB-powered hub, but it actually has a dedicated 2.1 amp output. So by connecting our Ricoh Magic uh, Mini PC to the 2.1 amp power output, it has dedicated power. So no matter how many devices we plug into this, okay. it will You're never go less than 2.1 amps. Right. So you, you know that your device is always going to be well-powered. If, if it goes below 2.2 amps, right, which would be the case if you plugged it into the service port and then plugged a bunch of devices into it, you, you could have stability issues and things like that because there's not enough power for the device. So this, from newertech.com, is available for under 30 bucks, like 25 to 30 bucks. So definitely uh, highly recommend that as a companion to this product. Uh, we'll take a look at how I actually set this up in a more advanced setup using uh, this hub from Newer Technology. So what I actually did is I've got this, uh, this USB hub, and you'll see it's got, what, five USB 2.0 ports, plus we've got the 2.1 amp dedicated uh, port and a sync port, and of course the input for power and USB. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug in the Rico Magic uh, into the 2.1 amp, and that is strictly power. This is what's cool too, is it's, it's not going to feed back any data. It's strictly power. So now I'm plugging in the Rico Magic to the power, which is the dedicated 2.1 amp uh, from Newer Technologies port uh, hub. And now here's where things get really cool. Now we want to actually replicate that single USB port on our Ricoh Magic device. So we're going to actually connect the data input on the newer technology USB 2.0 hub. We're going to plug that into the USB port for devices on the actual mini PC. So now you see what we're doing. Because that one is just power, we're not creating any kind of feedback loop or anything like that. We're actually giving it dedicated power, and now we have replicated it to give us five ports. This is the, uh, the actual USB receiver for the Air Mouse. So I'm plugging that in there. And I actually went about plugging in my uh, Logitech receiver as well. So even with my mouse and everything, I've still got four ports that are ready for me to use. So, and you can set this up a little neater. We're just doing this for the sake of demonstration. This is the Air Mouse, as I showed you just a moment ago, uh, and unfortunately didn't work in my test because it is just a demonstration model. This is the power cable. You're going to need that for your newer tech hub, and that is what's going to actually power the device and power all of the devices that are connected in, so it's not drawing any power from the, uh, the Ricoh Magic device. Set up, she looks like that. And uh, at the back of the TV set, there you go. Very, very simple to connect. Very easy to, to put everything together. And it looks clean. You, you likely won't even see that it's even there. So I will know. You will know. <laughs> so now we're going to fire it up uh, with this particular configuration. And now we'll, I'm actually going to show you how, how this thing looks once it's uh, up on the screen. Definitely cool. Keep in mind, this is an appliance, so you're not going to have to go through this boot up process any more than you know the, the first time that you uh, that you use it kind of thing. You're going to leave it running most of the time, I think. So you can see my air mouse, unfortunately, simply didn't work. Um, I would have liked it to work, and I would have loved to be able to show that to you. But what I did, see, no response. So that, of course, has nothing to do with the, the product itself. It's just the, the particular air mouse that I received. So instead, I switched over to the Logitech, just standard computer Wi-Fi mouse, plugged it into the USB hub, and you'll see that, uh, yeah, give it a go, works absolutely perfectly. This actually has, this device has a built-in, you know, it's the wireless full-size keyboard as well, um, so you're able to, to type on the screen, uh, you know, type when you bring up websites and things. 
How brilliant is that? So we'll get a, a real close look here at, uh, at the operating system. This is Android 4.1. First thing you need to do is set up your, uh, your Google account, um, which you do quite, I'm just speeding things up there just to get us in. And having a Google account, of course, means that you can install apps through the Google Play Store. And uh, in a lot of cases, those are going to be available for you free of charge. So I'm going to do a quick search. First thing I want to personally install is Netflix, uh, just so that I can, sh you know, this is connected to my TV. I want to make sure that it's, uh, that it's available, you know, that I can watch my shows directly on my TV. So with this $60, $70 device, now I've got Netflix connected to my HDTV set box, and it's up and going. Just like that. So Netflix cat5.tv slash Netflix to get the free trial. You get that coupled with this. Good to go. It is an Android device. So, you know, it automatically, you, you know, the hardware is compatible with Linux. So did a little bit of checking and somebody has actually been successful in porting Ubuntu Linux huh? to this device. So if you'd like, you can actually flash it. You can dual boot it. You can get Ubuntu Linux on there. I think it's 12.04. Um, it's an ARM-based chip, so it's a special uh, version. That, you know, it's not the one that you download off their website, but it is available uh, through the forums at cat5.tv slash mini-pc. You'll find it there, and I'll also post links in the show notes for episode number 283. Uh, Just an interesting little tidbit sure. as, a, as a Linux lover myself. Uh, but Android is a fantastic OS for doing this kind of thing, connecting to your, your uh, television screen. It's got web browser right out of the box. Netflix is easy to install. And I wanted to kind of test the the actual product itself, and and you know I'm I'm a bit of a sucker for visual appealing elements, and and Android is is you know pretty gorgeous operating system. Uh, that is one cute little Android. It is, yeah. One of the things that I love is uh, is enhancing my dash with. Uh, with, with live wallpaper. So I did a quick search for just simply beach live wallpaper because it's a beach scene uh, right out of the box. And I thought, yeah, maybe I'll see if there's a live wallpaper version uh, that I could install. So grab that. Live wallpaper, of course, allows you to do some really cool things. Take that scene and actually make it animated in the background. The, the out of the box ones, uh, they pre perform fantastically. The, the device itself is super fast. The uh, the GPU is is quite incredible for the for the size of this thing. There you go. So as that installs, there we go. Now I can now that it's installed, I can bring up live wallpaper again, and you see that the beach scene is there. I can activate that and get away from the the old static desktop wallpaper. Just a little bit of a coolness factor. So wow. There, there you go. You can just like Android, remove it uh, from the dash by dragging it up to the X and you're good to go so pretty simple to get everything up and running really really easy to get this thing uh, operational the performance is exceptional um, and it is a, an incredibly small device so with your USB hub could you attach an external drive for I am not sure on that um, I, I think so download but all your your stuff or yeah I'm trying to think of if I had done that with because it's Android, and yeah, right. if you plug in an external hard drive, you'll get access to the photos and things like that. So it's it's going to be exactly the same situation. Um, basically, it's all just self-contained. So what what you would find in a 10-inch tablet is now in this little device with full 1080p support at 60 frames a second. Granted, right, right. So, so you're talking about a this is a full HD. This is the innards without the display and the touchscreen and but all even that sort more of stuff. So because yeah. how many tablets are 1080p? True. True. Right. True. Um, so, I mean, yeah, if you put videos on it, plug them in, stick them on a flash drive and connect it, then you'll be good to go. Cool. Cool stuff? Cool stuff. Pick it up at cat5.tv slash mini PC. Don't forget, get the companion hub. This is from newer technology at cat5. Uh, no, pardon me, newertech.com. Uh, is where you want to get that. So all together, you're looking at under a hundred bucks, unless you want to get the keyboard or some other controller. But you've probably got something you can use at home, um, and you'll be able to, you know, plug that in. My PS2, uh, no, no PS2, <laughs> uh, but your USB keyboard. Even if you want to go wired, I mean, why not? But your phone, I'm wired tablet, half the time. Oh, so your tablet, know. you can use that as a controller as well, which is actually really cool. I would have loved to show you that tonight, uh, but unfortunately, we, we're limited to how much time that we have. But uh, so check that out. So this Netflix, you're pretty much uh, pretty much set. 
Yeah. Um, Category 5.tv, you get onto the Bring website. Bring me another uh, lemonade and away I go. <laughs> I tested it with our website. It came up beautifully. It, it worked flawlessly. The video played great. No lag. The video just plays exceptionally well on this. Um, so, very, uh, you know, I'm, I'm impressed. You will be too. Go get yourself <laughs> one. Makes a great gift. Cat well, thank you. TV slash mini PC. Okay. Category 5 TV is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. Thanks for watching.